Hi, welcome to the Pulse Shift News, the home of the Mav Star Observatory. Guys, a couple of things coming up in the video. We're going to look at some of the data uh, fresh in this week from uh, Kentucky. Thank you, Brad, for sending that in. And we're also going to be talking about a few of the projects that we've got going now. Now, if you've missed the last week or so, then you've missed some big news, guys. We're going into the field now of studying um, muons. And the reason why we're studying muons on the surface level of the Earth, and they're going to be these muon detectors that we're going to be building are going to be sent out around the world, and we're going to get readings of the muon counts in these different countries so that we can get a good idea as to how much cosmic radiation is inbound right now as a result of a couple of things. But like I said, big thanks to those few that are supporting this because without you guys, we wouldn't add the magnetometers, we wouldn't have the TriMag system, we wouldn't have the magnetosphere sensor, and we wouldn't be now monitoring those muons, which gives us an indication of how much cosmic rays are inbound right now as a result of two things. A magnetic pole reversal on the Earth, weakening the magnetosphere, and a grand solar minimum, weakening the heliosphere, which protects the whole of our solar system. So guys, we're doing loads more than we ever have. And let's not face it, let's, sorry, let's face it as well. We're also building that cloud generator so we can look at those particle traces that each uh, particles leave. And we might even find, if we're lucky, some muons, some cosmic rays, and some other um, elementary particles that go through the cloud chamber. So let's get on with it, guys. So as you can see, guys, we're looking at the Kentucky, USA data uh, from the 6th of the 7th, 2019 to the 28th of the 7th, 2019. And um, <clears throat> what we can see uh, first off with the chart is that the magnetometer has been shifted a little bit at some point. Uh, there's an abnormal line here where it jumps from 102 microteslas up to you know 106 microteslas and then begins its normal recording pattern. We do know that when we're looking at this data now, and it's the same from all over the different locations that we've got the magnetometers now, whether it's in Australia, uh, Hong Kong, or America, we do know that there is a fluctuation over the month generally every day of about two microteslas and that's normal. We do see it sometimes creep up a little bit like here in the middle of this uh, section here and then sometimes it creeps gradually back down but that's perfectly normal. But more what we want to be doing is just focusing on uh, collecting nice neat lines of data and the only way we're going to do that is if the magnetometers are not adjusted so you know I've, I've spoken to a few people about this I know that a couple have already got this um, little thing sorted out and you know that is basically they've got to be screwed uh, permanently to the surface of wherever they are or they've got to be glued uh, with some decent resin or bonding of some sort so that they don't move because if they move a little bit this is where we get the little jumps and um, we can tell that it's a movement because the line goes straight up and obviously at that point it's been left and it settles down collecting the readings now it's okay we can still crop you know we can still take out the sections of data that we were interested in but what we want is them not to move at all so we get nice neat lines uh, the other thing i noticed is that there's about two weeks of data uh, missing from the kentucky one so maybe we'll get that in the next data drop next month hopefully so guys, at the moment, it's like I said um, on Diamond's uh, podcast the other day, it's a little bit too early to call anything with regards to what we're seeing right now. We are expecting to see, if we just take a look at the maps, for instance, over here where M1 and M2 is. Now M1 is in South California, as you know, M2 is Kentucky, the data we were just looking at. And what we are um, expecting to see over the next six months is a reduction in the intensity so it should be coming down gradually and we know that's the case because this region over Canada where the highest intensity is or the Canadian pole what we call it um, is shrinking and it's done probably 50% reduction in the last seven years so you know perhaps in the next seven years this region of high intensity won't be over Canada anymore but what we should see in the next six months all we expect to see is those numbers on the chart creeping down so our, our chart should be showing lower and lower it's going to be a little bit different uh, from M3 and M4 because we know that the intensity of the Siberian pole is moving towards our magnetometers so what we should be seeing there is an increase and likewise in Australia over in Perth and on the Gold Coast we should see the intensity slowly creeping up 
as that main intensity there goes closer and closer to our magnetometer so we should get a higher reading and you know with that we can gauge on how fast things are moving with these high intensity regions now um, sometime this week we're going to be sending a magnetometer out to Brazil and um, talking with someone at the moment uh, if we can get the communication going again uh, in South Africa and the reason why we want to put two magnetometers out in these locations is to track that South Atlantic anomaly which is the lowest magnetic region on our planet and the other thing we're going to be doing uh, over in the next month or two is putting our muon detectors or our cosmic ray detectors in this vicinity as well because this is one of the most interesting regions for as far as I'm concerned to put one of these muon detectors because we've got a weakened uh, field over South Africa and Brazil uh, and South, South America and it would just be interesting to know just as a result of that weakened field how much inbound cosmic radiation is actually taking place we know that there's going to be slightly more protection in the highest intensity regions over you know Canada and Siberia and over the now south coast of Australia but nevertheless we're still going to put magnetom uh, sorry muon detectors in these regions so we can get an idea as to how much um, the intensity is with regards to the amount of cosmic radiation inbound in those regions so what we're looking at guys with the muon detectors or the cosmic ray detectors is how much these high intensity regions are still protecting uh, them continents underneath them and we should be able to get you know uh, a correlation between the two and you know we'll be able to make some forecasts with that as well as making forecasts with how fast these poles or these high intensity regions are actually moving about our planet right now now you might be thinking to yourself guys why are we interested in cosmic rays Cosmic rays are not just harmful for ourselves here on this planet and all the other biodiversities, and I mean across all the ranges. When the cosmic rays inbound at high levels, it can affect a lot of things in a lot of ways. We know that cosmic rays now are directly relating to the amount of cloud cover that we've got extra on our Earth. As a result, the jet streams have widened, they've become more sluggish, and we're getting these big deposits of rain in uh, you know short spaces of time you know break records and you know flood out places as a result of just simply more cosmic radiation but it also affects our cardiac arrhythmosis um, it also is carcinogenic to us so you know when these are on the increase and if you look at this space environment chart and just look what happened at the last um, so at the end of solar cycle 23 and we're at the end by the way guys of solar cycle 24 but if you just look at the quantity of radiation that was inbound in our planet at that point in time at the end of solar cycle 23 and beginning of solar cycle 24 and compare that to the uh, end of solar cycle 22 you will see that we are in a period of time now where it's not even on this chart the amount of cosmic radiation that is actually increasing and you know it is only going to get worse if we continue to have a grand solar minimum a low output of these up here sunspots because when the sunspots become less and less in numbers so does that increase the amount of cosmic radiation so it's a good job that we've now took the initiative at the observatory to send out globally uh, around 15 of these muon detectors and maybe even more at a later date and also increase the amount of magnetometers that we've got out there in the field and just get this data back and we can see for ourselves at what places over our earth have been affected already by the weakening magnetic poles and the grand solar minimum taking place that's why we're doing what we're doing guys and you know it's only because a few people have been uh, generous enough to support us i'm sure we all want to know uh, what risks we're at with the levels of cosmic radiation and you know I just hope that there's a few more people out there that's prepared to support the observatory because things are getting more busier and busier here every week guys and you know we're spending as a result of that more and more money so if we can get a little bit back in uh, in forms of support from you guys either a PayPal link uh, sorry a PayPal donation or you join us on uh, Patreon you know that's the only way we can continue doing it um, guys I'll 
hopefully be doing an update this week on the cloud generator. Now, not only are we going to be collecting uh, the rates of cosmic radiation, but we're hoping to actually show you some traces going through cloud generators. And I don't think there's another website on the internet, on YouTube, that is doing exactly what we're doing and relaying all this back to you guys, the public, because we know the mainstream organisations that are into the field of particle physics aren't telling us what's going on and likewise for the magnetic data you just can't get it even from the european space agency or nasa they don't release it at a certain level that we're interested in and that's a real um, misfortune but at least you know we're doing the best job we can we've got a trimag over here in the uk which monitors uh, the position of the magnetic north pole every three seconds we've got a magnetosphere uh, sensor that measures the magnetic field strength every 15 minutes and we've got ma magnetometers in the United States, India, Hong Kong and Australia and soon to be in Brazil and Africa. So we're really doing a great effort guys, we just need all one thing and that is a bit of support to continue doing it and you get the, you get the results guys, that's it at the end of the day and I think that's why most people that do support us um, you know, get, feel they, they get that back at least. Okay, guys, no need to go on anymore. I'll just mention that the links are down there, PayPal and Patreon, and I'll catch up with the week. You have a great weekend, and I'll see you again. So what I usually do. Bye for now.